Hello everyone, my name is Adarsh and welcome to my series called Data Structures are Awesome. So data structures are one of the most fundamental concepts in computer science that is used everywhere. Yet because of the way it is usually taught, it seems kind of useless and often boring to learn. So the goal with the series is to look at data structures from a practical perspective and understand why they exist and what makes them special and look at some practical applications of data structures that we commonly use in software engineering. In parallel, I'm also thinking about discussing coding interview questions related to these. Um, rather than simply discuss the solutions to problems, my goal is to help you learn how to think and how to approach problems and recognize the patterns so that you'll be able to solve any problem given to you. So please subscribe to this channel and click on that bell icon so that you do not miss out on any new content. So yes, in today's video, we will start off with why you should learn about stacks. Uh, then we will see what a stack data structure is and its operations. Next, we will look at how stacks are implemented in Python and C++. And finally, we will discuss some more applications on stacks. So why learn about stacks? A usual question that pops into our mind while learning something is that, am I ever going to use this? So stacks seem to be one of those things that seem useless, but in computer science, you simply have to learn it. Uh, but if you think deeply, uh, that is not the case. Most things that you do on your computer daily depend on stacks in some way, usually for uh, context handling or maybe memory management. Also, the very amazing undo redo function that you use every day in ma across many applications is implemented using stacks. Something similar happens when you restore the most recently closed tab on your browser, right? Also, your code editor uses a stack to check if you've closed all your parentheses properly and even to format your code. And as a programmer, you might come across a similar problems more often than you think. So you should be able to recognize the patterns and identify the type of problems that can be uh, solved using a stack. Now, what are stacks? A stack is an abstract data type that serves as a collection of elements with two main operations, push and pop. So stacks are often compared to a stack of plates where adding a new plate or removing an existing one is possible only from the top. Usually uh, they are represented like this, like a bucket or a rack with the data inside it. Stacks implement the LIFO or last in first out policy. That is the element that was most recently pushed or inserted gets um, popped or removed first. So let's look at the stack operations. So inserting an element into a stack is called a push operation and removing an element from a stack is called a pop operation. There is also an optional top or peak operation that simply returns the top element without removing it, which is useful just to know what is currently on the top of the stack. And as you can see in the representation of a stack, the elements can be accessed only from the top of the stack, right? And everywhere else is closed. So popping basically puts the last element first and the second last the second and reverses the order of the elements uh, in which they were inserted in, right? So because of this property, stacks can be used to solve the problem of reversing numbers, words, um, sentences, or any ordered set of objects. Now let's look at how stacks are implemented in Python and C++. By the way, you can download a free PDF that contains everything that I covered in this video in some more detail with the code also. So you can find the link to that in the description. So do check it out. So in Python, stacks can be implemented using the built-in list. So the list object has two functions append and pop, which correspond to the push and pop operations of a stack. When you append an element, it gets added to the end of the list. And when you pop the last added element or the element at the end gets removed, right? So the end of the list is the top of the stack basically. So for the top or peak operation, you can simply do the list object of minus one, right? To get the last element. And in C++, uh, the stack data structure is available in the STLR standard template library. You can in simply include this stack header file and declare a stack object like this. And this object has all the stack operations, right? Push, pop, and top. 
and it also contains empty to check if a stack is empty or not and size to get the count of elements in stacks. So if you want uh, as an exercise you can also create your own stack right create a class uh, stack that implements all these operations and holds the uh, data inside your stack right but I think knowing how a stack works and what its properties are is more important than simply knowing how to implement it. Now let's look at some of the conventional applications of stacks that is commonly used in computer science. So number one is expression evaluation and syntax passing. So stacks are used to convert the notation of one expression to another, right? For example, infix to prefix, prefix to postfix, uh, postfix to infix, etc. So this is usually uh, used in calculators and compilers. So if you're not familiar with these notations, you should definitely learn them. Uh, they're usually asked for um, coding interviews or even for exams, right? The values and operators uh, are stored in the stack and the order of evaluation is based on the order in which they are added. So for example, consider uh, 2 plus 3, which in postfix notation looks like 2, 3 plus, right? So 2 and 3, so to evaluate this, uh, 2 and 3 are pushed, right? So 2 is pushed first, then 3 is pushed. And when you see an operator, you don't push it. You pop off the last two elements in the stack and apply the operator on it so that you get um, 2 plus 3 equal to 5, right? Similarly, more complex expressions can be evaluated using stacks. And it is also used to uh, check the correctness of an expression, like every opening bracket matches uh, closing brackets or every opening tag has a corresponding closing tag to it or not. Uh, this is also a very uh, popular type of uh, coding interview question. Next is backtracking. So backtracking refers to the algorithm that has a goal and if it takes like a wrong path, it can go back to a state in time. So for example, uh, if you are creating an algorithm to solve or to play tic-tac-toe, you can generate and explore all the possible moves and backtrack back to a previous state if you made a wrong move, right? Uh, and the same concept is used in a depth first search algorithm, which we will discuss when we will get to um, trees and graphs. Another application is compile time memory management. So many programming languages use the stack to store variables and information associated with each function called. Right, so every time you uh, call a function, a stack is created and the uh, information related to that function is um, put on the stack. And this is called a call stack and every time you create a new function or a new function is called, a new entry on the stack is created, right, that holds everything that is associated with that function. And when the function returns, the contents of the stack that correspond to this particular function that returned is popped off. Again, recursion is a concept where a function calls itself, right? So when this happens, a new entry is created on the call stack for every single call, right? So this uh, somehow becomes quite uh, similar to a depth first search. And a common pattern that is seen in coding interview problems is to optimize um, these problems that are based on recursion, right? And the way to do that is to simply rewrite it using a stack because recursion takes up more space and more resources on your computer, whereas a stack does not. And it makes your program much, much more faster. Finally, it is used to increase the efficiency of some algorithms. Several algorithms make use of the stack data structure and its properties. And some examples are gram scan, which is used to find the convex hull and, and the problem of finding the nearest smaller or larger value in an array. And we will probably discuss more about these problems in a future video. So that's it. If you found a value in this video, please do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon. I'll be coming with more similar videos soon. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.